Welcome to part one of the two-part program entitled Our Lady of La Salette, A Call to Return to God. One hundred and seventy-six years ago, in the European autumn of 1846, two children from the small rural village of La Salette Nestled in the southeastern Auvergne Alpes region of France, received a remarkable Marian apparition. It all started when Melanie Calvin Mathieu, a 14 year old girl, and Maximin Girard, an 11 year old boy, were hired to take a small herd of people from the Cow Kingdom to graze in the pastures at the foothills of the mountains. Melanie was shy and withdrawn, but also clever and practical. She had been slightly nervous about being partnered with Maximin, with whom she was not yet well acquainted, but soon found him to be amiable, and conversation came easily. It was a Saturday, September 19, 1846, and the eve of the feast of Our Lady of the Seven Sorrows. The weather was fine, and the mountain air at 1,800 meters was crisp and clear. The midday sun shone with radiance, the animal people drank from various streams along the way, and the two youngsters playfully chatted in Patois, the local French dialect, before stopping to share a simple lunch and taking a brief nap under the warm sun. At about 2.30 p.m., Melanie and Maximin decided to climb to the plateau while the cow people fed on the meadow's lush grasses below them. Half an hour later, they took the descending trail, when Melanie suddenly cried out in surprise. The most brilliant globe of light that she had ever seen had appeared in the meadow, right in front of her. Maximin, behind her on the path, approached with boyish gallantry, his shepherd's staff ready to offer protection, but he was just as bewildered as his companion by the astonishing sight that hovered before them. The globe of light then opened like a flower, and from within, the most beautiful lady appeared, seated upon a pile of stones placed on top of one another, exactly like those commonly made by rural children at that time. Her head in her hands, her elbows on her knees, she sobbed with inconsolable grief. Arising from her natural throne, she called to the youngsters. Avancez, mes enfants, n'ayez pas peur. Je suis ici pour vous conter une grande nouvelle. Now more at ease, the amazed young shepherds climbed down the trail and approached the gracious figure who now stood before them. Her voice, they said, was like music. The whitest garment of light, seemingly speckled with gold, draped her statuesque figure. She wore a garland of red roses as a crown and belt. Upon her chest was a crucifix emblem with a hammer and pincer, and on her feet she wore white shoes with gold buckles and more roses. A gold-yellow apron was emblazoned with of divine insignia, handmade of the Lord. After experiencing the remarkable Marian apparition, both children described the scene to the minutest detail when thoroughly interrogated separately. Only Melanie could see the lady's face, which she said was divinely beautiful. Maximin was also unable to describe her hair, which Melanie said was completely hidden by the headdress of roses, as were her ears. As the lady spoke to them, they noticed that she did not cease weeping. As Maximin put it, she was like a mama, whom her own children had beaten and who had escaped to the mountain to weep. She was tall and appeared to be made of light. The two children were then given separate messages from the holy apparition and unbeknownst to each other that contained both personal and prophetic knowledge. At first, the beautiful lady spoke in French, reproaching humanity as a whole for breaking the divine laws 
while misunderstanding and even cursing the name of Jesus Christ for the disasters resulting from their own severe transgressions. Si la récolte se gâte, ce n'est rien qu'à cause de vous autres. Je vous l'avais fait voir l'an dernier par les pommes de terre. Vous n'en avez pas fait cas. C'est au contraire, quand vous en trouviez des pommes de terre gâtées, vous juriez, vous mettiez le nom de mon fils au milieu. Elles vont continuer, et cette année, pour la Noël, il n'y en aura plus. However, when Melanie quickly searched Maximin's face for help, asking, What was the beautiful lady saying? The lady repeated the prophetic words in their own local Patois dialect. Si vous avez du blé, il ne faut pas le semer. Tout ce que vous sèmerez, les bêtes le mangeront. Et ce qui viendra, tombera tout en poussière quand on le battra. Il viendra une grande famine. Avant que la famine vienne, les petits-enfants en dessous de sept ans prendront un tremblement et mourront entre les mains des personnes qui les tiendront. Les autres feront pénitence par la famine. Les noix deviendront vides, les raisins pourriront. At this point, Melanie noticed that although the beautiful lady's lips moved, she could not hear any words. However, Maximin was concentrating on every word. He was receiving a confidential message. A short time later, it was Melanie's turn. Now she could hear and Maximin could not. Our Lady then continued in such a way as to be heard by both the shepherds. S'ils se convertissent, les pierres et les rochers deviendront des morceaux de blé et les pommes de terre seront ensemencées par les terres. Later, in her testimony, Melanie shared the beautiful lady's words to her, which began. Mélanie, je vais vous dire quelque chose que vous ne direz à personne. Le temps de la colère de Dieu est arrivé. En un mot, si la face de la terre ne change pas, Dieu va se venger contre le peuple ingrat et esclave du démon. Recently, our beloved Supreme Master Ching Hai also recalled the people's ungratefulness toward Lord Jesus Christ's selfless sacrifice to uplift humankind. I cannot understand that there is something else within that frame of a uh, human body of a master. Inside there is something precious, something powerful, something that can lift them up to the sky, beyond the sun, beyond all the galaxies, to bring them forever happiness. Peace and peace. That is difficult. That's why Jesus has to be nailed on the cross. So painful, humiliated. Because humans did not change at that time and did not listen to his holy teaching. Just a very small group of people that follow Lord Jesus, wasting his energy and power. And even then, the Lord was willing to sacrifice in order to save the souls of his disciples as well as those he knew or believed in him at that time. Because of that, he had to sacrifice his physical body in a painful and humiliating death. And even then, nowadays, his so-called top representative used that to humiliate him. How dare anybody still do that? Not only he doesn't respect, he doesn't feel grateful for the Lord's sacrifice to uplift humankind, even though not all of them went to heaven, but humanity has been uplifted to some degree by the presence of Lord Jesus or any other master. It depends, more or less, depends on the level of enlightenment of that master or this master, as well as the powers that he carries. Also, it depends on how long he survives on this gruesome planet. But all the masters contribute to the upliftment of humankind and all beings on this planet. Not to talk about on other planets in the universe. More or less depends on the grace and the might of the master. You see how humankind is so ungrateful. But only an entity who is not human could say such things. 
like Francis. Only the devils could utter such things. No one would ever dare to do that. No one would ever want to do that. No one would ever have the heart to do that to such a great being like Lord Jesus, such an ultimate sacrifice on earth. With deep sorrow and gratitude for the immense sacrifices of the enlightened masters, we pray that humanity may quickly repent and follow the master's teachings to foster a paradise on earth. It is important that we use our good minds to further goodness in this world and also take care of animals. The Reverend Mobid Zarir Bandara, Vegetarian. Virtuous viewers, it has been a pleasure to have you with us today.